Hey friends, I know the hat doesn't go with the frock. <laughs> I'm very well aware of that. Thanks for clicking on this video. I hope that you will find this information useful. And as the title suggests, I'm going to talk a little bit about why rolled paper cartridges don't work for me. In my particular application, I have found them to be pretty much useless. That's not to say they're not a good idea because they absolutely are. But when it comes to myself and black powder shooting, I don't rendezvous with the guys that do the Civil War reenactments or anything like that. For me, it's just a matter of you know taking my black powder revolver up into the mountains when I'm hiking for just self-protection. But I do want to talk a little bit about what I've discovered regarding paper cartridges. And it's a little bit of a breeze. I apologize, it might be annoying, but I'm going to try to talk in between the gusts, the breeze, and then I'll go ahead and do some shooting. Because what I really want to do is shoot up the last remaining paper cartridges that I have and uh, these have been loaded for about two and a half years so that's kind of how long I don't want to say I've been playing with these things but this is how long I've had these setting around so first of all when we talk about paper cartridges there are some folks out there that talk about nitrating coffee filters, which is what I've done, and I have a coffee filter right here that I've nitrated, and I'm going to show you why it is advantageous to nitrate your coffee filters. Okay, so this is the coffee filter. I'm going to put a match to it and watch what it does. Hopefully this will go off with the breeze. Maybe not. Well, I've had to go on the plan 13B, <laughs> the match. So let me get uh, lit here. And there's your, that's what your nitrated paper does. It burns very efficiently and very quickly. The problem that I had is if you can look back and see on the table, all of this fine soot stays in your cylinder. And what I discovered is that the next round that I put into my cylinder pushed all that soot to the bottom of my cylinder and it ended up plugging up the um, the hole, the bottom of the cone. And then my next shot ended up being slow to ignite. So that's one reason why I myself do not prefer to use nitrated coffee filters. Now, the next item would be rolled cigarette paper. And let me get one and we'll burn that off and see what the burn is like. And there's your burn, the cigarette paper. And as you can tell, that's pretty quick also. But, unlike the nitrated coffee filter, very little carbon or soot or unburnt paper was not left behind in my cylinders. So I chose to make my paper cartridges out of cigarette paper. Now, a few days ago, my wife was doing some sewing and she actually cut a new pattern out and asked if any of the tissue would actually work for making my paper cartridges. So now, I'm going to try this. So here's the tissue paper. It's fairly thin, and I'm not quite sure how well this is gonna do with the breeze. 
But you can see it does burn fairly quick. And looking at what's on the table right now, not much soot is actually left behind. So that's the test for the three papers. Obviously, if you have a person that knows how to sew, those pattern pieces that are left behind might be a good source for making your uh, paper cartridges. Now, the reason why I am staying away from paper cartridges altogether is for this reason. Obviously, these little Altoid cans are perfect containers for holding paper cartridges. And for me, they had worked great. But the problem that I encountered yeah, I had to reposition the camera. Um, the wind changed direction and now it was directly into the microphone. But the problem that I had is when I first started learning to make paper cartridges, the YouTube videos that I had watched suggested twisting the bottom of it to close it off, which is a good idea if it works. But the problem that I had carrying them in my Altoids can is that some of the bottoms came undone and the powder fell out. So in the bottom of my Altoids can, I've got a bunch of gunpowder, loose gunpowder. So for me, that's not going to work. Now, I did learn to make the block, the mold, the, uh, the jigs, for cutting the patterns out. It's not that difficult. I turned the forming dies, my wood lathe, and then I started making the paper cartridges with the glued on bottoms. Now I have not used these since I had made these and they've just been sitting, you know, in my, uh, in my closet. Because in the midst of all of this, I came across a video that Blackie Thomas had done talking about the plastic containers that you could get from um, Dixie Gunworks. And then when I went to the catalog to look at what they were, you know, what they would cost or anything like that, I came across the Errors Gone um, Bullet Mold channel. Uh, and he suggested just buying some of the plastic tubing in a hardware department, a hardware store and then using this to hold your powder ball in wad. And I very much favor this method for a number of reasons. But first and foremost is that where I live here in the Southwest, we get a lot of monsoons, a lot of driving winds, and I have discovered over the years that even a pouch like this which is very period for the Civil War era, it still tends to get water in it. So at that point, some of my paper cartridges were getting contaminated. So I kind of put all of that aside and now I completely favor the enclosed plastic tube. So with all of that being said, I have some paper cartridges that I need to shoot and since they've been loaded for about two and a half years, I think this would be a good time to see how well they're going to shoot just having been setting around. So let me get loaded up and uh, we'll do a little bit of shooting. The firearm that I'm using today is my Remington Sheriff's model, 44 caliber, obviously. I have it loaded up with 30 grains of GoX 3F. I'm not looking for any type of accuracy because I'm not sure what these things are going to do. I just want to get them shot off and just see what's going to happen. But I do have a um, felt wad between the ball and the powder charge. I'm using a 454 round ball and number 10 CCI standard percussion cap. And these are all the cartridges that I have actually twisted the bottom of the cartridge to seal them and keep the powder in place. So let's see what it's going to do.
Well, six for six. No hesitation. And it looks like my point of aim might be just about on. We get uh, reloaded, put some more clay pigeons out there, and um, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, the camera will pick most of this up. I'm going to try to show you in the sunlight just how much garbage is left behind. So let me zoom in. And once again, I apologize for the breeze, but as you hopefully you can see, as I rotate this in the sun light, that you might be able to see what I was speaking to about pieces of paper or whatever is actually left behind inside the cylinder. And it's pretty obvious that there is one chunk of paper right at the top of that one cylinder throat. Now imagine not having seen that and put another load on top of that. It would just end up pushing all of that crap right down into the bottom of the cylinder. And that's what I was speaking to about plugging the uh, holes in the bottom of the cone. And I hope you can see this well enough. Just for the benefit of those who may not know completely or understand how these paper cartridges work and just how easy they are to load. Now bear in mind, I only shoot round ball with a felt wad. When you go to a bullet that has a shoulder that you can glue the paper to, they're even that much easier to load. But just show you real quick. Guns on half cock. Loading levers loose. You drop it in. Now like I said, for me, I use a felt wad. So I have to, at this point, push the felt wad into the cylinder. And sometimes it's difficult, yes. <laughs> but once I get that in, and it's just a matter of ramming everything down into the cylinder. That's just how easy they are. But for me, I would still rather use, you know, the loose powder and ball coming out of the little plastic tubes. So let me get uh, loaded up and uh, let me try that again just for the sake of the camera and the audience that may not be all that familiar with how this is done. And I'll try to do it this time in the camera. Drop it in, and like I said, I actually have to work it in just a little bit, get it underneath the ramrod, and then ram it home. And you can see the paper that keeps the ball in place does shave off, and that little lead ring shaves off also. Alright, I'm loaded up. Same load. Uh, let's see what it does. Obviously, six for six, and I believe I missed three, but they were actually low. So I have three more to uh, shoot off, and I have three more targets. So let's see if I can't break them up. 
And just so that we're all in agreement or we all know, I'm actually shooting once again at 16 yards. Once again, we can see the paper that's left in the cylinder. Let me zoom in once again. This is why I do not favor paper cartridges. See, unless you clean these cylinders out every time, the likelihood of you reloading on top of those and blocking your, your hole, the bottom of the cone, you're going to have delayed firing. I hope this visual aid helps. So I'm going to get these cylinders cleaned out load up my last three and uh, shoot them off. Well, obviously, this revolver hits the point of aim. Friends, thanks for watching, and I hope everybody will have a blessed day. Bye.